Good afternoon, everyone, and uh, welcome to the Social Media Best Practices for Construction webcast panel discussion by the Construction Marketing Association. My name is Neil Brown. I'm chairman of the Construction Marketing Association. I hope uh, many of you are familiar with this with the association. We have a lot of exciting content on our constructionmarketingblog.org, and we have a great uh, webcast series that um, is on the 15th of, of each month. I'm very pleased to introduce our esteemed panel today. And uh, each panelist is a member of the association. And with that, uh, we will move uh, over to Kevin Espinoza from Caterpillar. Kevin? So um, I'm the channel development manager at Caterpillar. Boy, that's a pretty ambiguous title, like I'm sure many of you guys out there have. But uh, basically, I'm, I'm responsible for developing marketing channels for Caterpillar. So as new things evolve, like social media, mobility, or whatever the next channel in the horizon is, I need to investigate that and uh, figure out how Caterpillar is going to use that. So that's my role. I have uh, Also, I have um, all of our customer-facing applications that we do e-commerce with, with our customers, uh, responsible for the strategy of, of cat.com, our public-facing website and uh, also, obviously, for social media. So where are we in social media space? Uh, just kind of a background perspective. We were kind of slow in the game, especially for a, a Fortune 50 company. We really didn't get active in social media until August of 2009. Uh, there were actually uh, some other fan pages out there representing Caterpillar that uh, were not uh, run by the company. And actually, those uh, there were two U of I students, and they were doing a pretty good job. Uh, but we weren't happy with that, um, so we had to make our presence out there. Uh, just so you know, we let them continue do their uh, do, do their own thing. So we didn't want to look like the 800-pound gorilla and crush them um, because they they I mean, in the spirit of social media, they were doing exactly what uh, was supposed to be done, and uh, they continued to run. But uh, theirs is uh, is uh, dying very slowly because of our presence. So we uh, started about uh, August of 2009 with the efforts that you see, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, LinkedIn, and branded communities. And uh, before then, we kind of watched and learned. We kind of watched the other big brands out there, uh, noticed, watched how they were doing things. And I, I would advise that to you very highly is uh, watch you know, what other people are doing out there on Facebook and Twitter and, and see what draws engagement from uh, their post and what works and what doesn't and uh, it's still shamelessly from them. Um, not that we did that, but I would if I were you. Facebook, you know, the big, the big one. We have, uh, we have about, uh, we don't have about, I just looked. We have uh, 13,686 uh, fans, or as they call them, likes now, which, um, to be honest with, we're not too happy with. Um, we think uh, we should be in the hundreds of thousands of uh, followers or uh, fans uh, on Facebook. Uh, a big challenge that we have uh, with Facebook is, uh, you know, we're a business-to-business -business company, and really the, our dealers have the relationship with uh, the customers. So, you know, you always see cool things out there from Starbucks, which they have millions of, uh, of, of likes uh, on their page, or somebody like Oreo, which I follow because I love Oreos. Uh, you know they can they can uh, they had a, a kind of a challenge one day and I can't remember how many it was exactly but I think they wanted to get one million uh, likes in one day so uh, what they did was basically you know offer everybody free cookies and who who in the heck wouldn't be a be a fan of a page for a pack of free Oreos so I did and uh, so they can they can use tactics like that to you know start uh, you know start getting people on their site. Uh, and uh, once you get that, you can start sending the messages that you really want, and that will start ringing the cash register. We have a, a little of a challenge there, but uh, you know our goals from a, a Facebook Facebook perspective is number one. Our number one and, and most rudimentary goal was just kind of a from a brand reputation perspective. You know, people expect you know uh, companies uh, to be out there and to be represented. I don't care how big or small you are. You know, people are looking for you out there. So it's a shame if you're not. And uh, the, the second goal, as we got into a little more sophistication, was to drive web traffic to our other web assets. So that, that meaning if we had a, a web campaign, we wanted to send them out to that information. If we had a new product introduction, we wanted to do that. 
Um, or if we wanted to get them to a specific application to buy parts, like our parts store, uh, we would send them out there so we would promote those sites. And then uh, we're kind of looking for a new lead generation. You know, uh, again, it kind of goes back to my other goal, but, um, it, you know, uh, we're all here to make money, right? So how do we ring the cash register with, um, with Facebook? And so we're getting more and more engaged with uh, integrating with our campaigns, which is good. And then um, last but uh, not least, and we haven't implemented yet, is using some of these channels like Facebook and Twitter for a feedback mechanism uh, on your products and services. And, uh, you know, that's a bit of uh, be careful what you ask for, right, because some of that stuff can spiral out of control real fast. But uh, um, I think uh, eventually we'll use some of that, um, uh, use some of these channels for that purpose. One more challenge that we have and, and uh, some of you global companies might have is, you know, how do you, how do you globalize some of these efforts? You know, how do we globalize Facebook? We haven't done that yet, um, and uh, we're still trying to figure that out. You know, first we have kind of a resource issue around that. You know, uh, it's, hard, it's hard to run, uh, you know, some of these uh, initiatives from Peoria, Illinois, right? You would like to have resources around the world to help you out with that. So we're still trying to figure that one out. One more thing on Facebook. Um, uh, I think a key thing that uh, with Facebook, and, and if you know Caterpillar, uh, you know, we're a pretty established company. You probably think we're pretty dry, et cetera. It's kind of, a, kind of our friendly face to our customers. We like to have fun and uh, present a different personality to our customers uh, via Facebook. So, and uh, one, one thing that you look at right here, if you look at our page, is that uh, we will have um, uh, um, um, profile picture of the week and the one you see on there of a uh, kind of a, an older tractor, uh, an antique tractor actually, um, was um, submitted by one of our uh, fans and uh, we change it every week. And that, that produces a lot of engagement um, from our um, fans to actually submit pictures and get engaged with our page. I, you know, I've read probably a million white papers as you as you guys have is uh, the best Facebook uh, page is actually one that's run by the customers or your fans itself right there's the least uh, you know if you're not doing a lot of engagement then really the fans are kind of doing what they should on your page and engage and telling everybody how much they love your product etc that organic type of uh, compliments is priceless okay Sorry about that. Back to uh, Twitter. So Twitter, I'll, I'll speed up a little bit. Um, Twitter, we have uh, 5,054 followers. Um, kind of our goals on uh, Twitter is kind of uh, uh, a, a little bit like Facebook, but get people where we want them to go, right? So to other assets, campaigns, things like that. Um, uh, kind of a contact builder. Uh, get more people listening and uh, and interested in your products and services. And that's just like Facebook, I think you, you have the same thing. So if you can really build that uh, wealth of fans and followers, you're, you're in good shape. Then you can really relay the messages and, and you got more people listening. And then uh, a reminder, uh, what's coming up? Where, where's Caterpillar? Where are, are they at Con Expo? Are they at Mine Expo? Are they about ready to introduce a, a new product? Uh, make people aware of what's going on in the company. And then uh, lastly, um, and, and not leastly, is event broadcaster. So we actually tweet from live, from a live events. So when we're at Kine Expo, we kind of say, hey, Caterpillar is uh, introducing the D7E on booth 39. Uh, come down, you know. And uh, if they're not there, if they can't uh, come over and see it, kind of give them a little virtual um, uh, representation of what's going on. And we've done that with new product introductions where, We'll actually tell people that uh, you know we're introducing introducing some of our tier four technology, and uh, we'll tell them what they're speaking about, et cetera. So make them feel like they're there uh, via this channel. Twitter's a lot different than Facebook and how you utilize it. Okay, next slide. YouTube. Um, YouTube. I'll go quickly through. We have uh, 976 subscribers, uh, and uh, and uh, we have 367,000 views. So. Uh, you can tell that a lot of people are hitting this. We use this kind of our, as our safe source for video, and we're actually going to start uh, feeding our, our Internet sites, uh, our websites with, um, with YouTube. And uh, we're not going to develop our own player anymore. It's just becoming too much of a hassle. 
but uh, you know, from a YouTube perspective, a goals, it's hard. You you can't beat the visibility that YouTube gets. So you'd be crazy not to be out there and to have your video uh, videos of your products out there. And then um, and then it's also like I said, the safe source of videos, and also you have the viral effect of of YouTube itself. So that's how we're using utilizing that. Uh, next slide. Uh, branded communities. Branded communities uh, are kind of a shining star, um, and uh, kind of put yourself in the picture of using the internet. I mean, uh, there isn't a probably a week that I'm not looking for some kind of expert advice, whether it's on uh, how to lift weights better, uh, how to fix my TV, or uh, things like that. Our customers are doing the same thing on our branded communities. So we have branded communities for. Um, uh, for four of our industries, and um, so people, uh, for example, in electric power, they're looking for, you know, how do I best utilize my generator? How do I maximize it? So it's kind of the user-to-user -user interaction on how to find answers to their questions. And uh, we monitor this, and, and we watch if they don't give answers within 24 hours, then Caterpillar will stop, uh, step in and act, uh, not, not act, but will uh, answer the question. Uh, my next point is that uh, it's very important uh, that you guys are, or that we act as experts. I think that's what people, our consumers, our, our, um, our users are looking for. They're looking for Caterpillar to act as an expert in their field. And so, like you heard previously, the blogs are priceless. And uh, every time we, we blog on our industry expertise uh, on these branded communities, our users just jump up like a hockey stick. And the good thing is that the hockey stick doesn't fall down. It continues there, and it keeps on going up with each block. So online communities are a very good way to communicate uh, socially with your customers. Next slide. Um, from a results and metrics perspective, we're sad. Um, uh, for a company of our size, we don't have anything in place. Uh, you know, we use Google Alerts. We do a lot of manual uh, monitoring. But, uh, you know, from a metrics perspective, uh, where uh, we look at basic measurements, the number of likes, the fans, the followers, interactions, the tweets, the retweets, how many videos are watched. Uh, that's what we, we uh, report uh, back up to in our management. But uh, we need to get uh, much better in that. So uh, just this week, we're starting to implement Radian 6 with a pilot with them. And uh, I have no doubt that we're going to use Radian 6 uh, to monitor our social media sites. And then last but not least, this is kind of a summary. Uh, so, you know, today we're using social media for awareness. You know, we're developing relationships and we're linking them to key areas. But just in summary, there's no doubt that uh, we, use, we need to use this channel to ring the cash register. And uh, until we do this, uh, you know, I don't think my management's going to be uh, real happy with me until we show an ROI around social media. Thank you, Kevin. Uh, very interesting points, and I think um, you mentioned you're not happy with 13,000 followers on, on Facebook, and you've got 367,000 downloads from YouTube. I think uh, a lot of us would be very happy with those metrics, and <laughs> I think that speaks to some of the scale of, of your uh, customer base as well. So. Congratulations on that. Well, that is uh, our time for today. If you would like to uh, email me a question that you might have, I'd be glad to, uh, to either try and answer it or forward it on to uh, one of our esteemed panelists. And uh, on behalf of our panelists, um, we'd like to thank you again for attending and look forward to uh, interacting with you in the future. Thanks so much.